I'm Sandeep and you're watching the Indian Weekender. Uh, today we are going to be in conversation with uh, Labour Party's uh, candidate for Takanini, Dr. Niru Levasa. Uh, but before we bring him in, just important thing about uh, this Takanini electorate. This Takanini is uh, a newly created electorate, uh, which is a marginal seat. We don't know which way it will go to Labour or to National, but it has been created in the South Auckland region, where we know that uh, there is a lot of ethnic diversity over there. We have got a huge composition of Pacifica, Maori and Asian population. Uh, from from the last time when we checked with uh, electoral commission, uh, uh, sorry, uh, from the last time when we checked with the census New Zealand, we came to know that there is probably around 20% of population of Kiwi Indians. So that is why we have immense interest in the outcome of this election at Takanini. So we are going to speak to Dr. Nehru, who has joined us from his campaign office somewhere in Takanini. So welcome to our virtual studio, Dr. Nehru. How are you today? I'm good, thank you, and uh, Sasika Dean, Namaste, Kia ora to all your viewers. Great. Thank you for so it has me. been, yeah, right. So it has been probably around two months since we spoke to you last when your campaign mm. was launched. So how has been this journey so far for you? It's been a good journey. Uh, it's been uh, in the last couple of months it's been ramping up in terms of campaigning activities. A lot of volunteers coming through. So um, yeah, hitting the doors on the phones and just getting the message out there and talking to as much people as we can. Right. Okay. So what exactly you've been hearing when you are going out? Uh, so what, what has been the uh, mm. most uh, captivating thing that you've heard from uh, those door knocking events? I think, I think first and foremost is the COVID uh, and the health response. I think um, when they look at, uh, when they're looking on the news and seeing, seeing what other countries are facing right now, they're, they're often the first thing we talk about is COVID. So yes, that's that's one thing that will, will always be on the minds of people. And then second thing would be local issues, such as how, you know, when I'm talking to Ormiston people, there are kids that go to school and the, the current school at the primary school is over capacity. So therefore having issues of housing the students, housing staff. So that's one thing. But it also in our Indian community, there's always the immigration issue that always pops up. So um, a lot of discussions around that. Right, okay. Now, yeah. Dr. Levasa, like you are a doctor, uh, of course, um, yeah. and, and you will be, like, if you are elected, that you will be going to be a doctor candidate, uh, doctor MP within Labour Caucus as well. So yeah. what are the main health issues that you would be lobbying or advocacy, advocating uh, within yeah. your party? Mm. I think one thing, I mean, with my experience, I mean, 12 years in South Auckland as a, as a doctor, uh, about 10 years as a GP, uh, and, you know, one of the top things we see in this area, there's going to be those social issues that, that kind of affect the health of our people. Um, yes, I've been brought in at a time when COVID-19 uh, is, is, is rampant uh, overseas, and, and it's been good well done uh, on the control over here in New Zealand. So using my skills to caucus and, and hopefully in the select committee in that sort of experience uh, uh, to help combat COVID, but also the local issues that we face here. Right, okay. Now, from what we know that uh, in our health system, like, you know, there is a huge wait time for surgeries mm. and, and sometimes mm. that is a really very painful wait. So mm. what you would be doing differently in your... Uh, position mm. as a Labour MP if you are elected mm. within your party mm. to change that. Yeah. So as we saw in the previous government before our first term uh, as the Labour-led coalition, I mean, there was a huge underinvestment in the health system. So trying to correct in the first three years, yes, it's been a, a process. And that's something that we'll have to target for the next term uh, if successful come Saturday. So, you know, we've seen this uh, 200 million uh, dollars being poured in to help with the backlog of surgeries. It's just been exacerbated because of COVID-19 with the lockdowns that we've seen that waiting list just grow a little bit more. But um, as a doctor sitting on this side, when, when Labour came into government, we started to see a lot um, of our patients being seen a lot more quicker. But, um, you know, the, I, I think this, this year has been unprecedented. So we've seen that waiting list just grow a bit more. So that's where we'll be focusing our, our policies and our um, targeting to help uh, yeah, improve on that backlog. 
Right, okay. Now coming back to your campaigning, can you tell us a little mm. bit more about uh, your day-to-day -day activity in the campaigning? Like, have you set up mm. a plan to uh, knock at a certain number of doors every day? Mm. Or uh, how, does, mm. how does your day unfold in, this, uh, in the mm. campaigning? Yeah. So, you know, with, with this electorate, it's, it's such a huge electorate, 75,000 um, people, a lot of um, households, you know, we've, we've had to try to target as many houses um, in our door knocking. So try to be uh, more effective and more efficient with our targeting of door knocks, our phone banking as well. Yes, you know, with the previous phone, uh, uh, the booths that were in the last election, uh, you know, there were blue areas, there were red areas, but making sure that we target the, targeted everyone, but, but also um, make sure that we are being effective at the same time. So as there's been a thousand, you know, a few thousand phone calls, a few thousand door knocks. So I'm happy with my team. They've worked really hard the last couple of months. Yeah. Sure. And, and uh, although I know that we have already discussed on that, so what is the mm. biggest problem that you have been told uh, from your electorate? Uh, what, mm. what exactly is the one big problem that you have been told mm. to fix once mm. you become an MP? Mm. Yeah. So minus what, what we've already spoke about, about almost in primary school, the junior school, the, the population growth in that particular area. But I, I see the population growth throughout the whole electorate. I mean, this, this, annual growth rate of 5% compared to 2.1 for New Zealand. So this is the second most highest um, growth in New Zealand itself. So there's going to be infrastructure issues. So when, when we're talking to um, our, our community, they often talks about, oh, the roads are too congested. There's too many cars on the road, or we need better roading system. The housing are too clumped up, or there's too much of a development in this particular area that our education facilities are unable to cope with. So those are the things I'll be co uh, advocating for us to make sure that we're keeping up with that population growth that when we are doing planning within our area that it is effective planning and that it is done well because you can have poor planning and therefore have congestion and poor you know organizations so what, are, what are the promises what are the promises you are giving from your end that you will be mm. delivering it mm. Mm. Oh, look, I've made my, my statements to all the community that I, that I meet with that I will work hard to advocate on those issues. And I've, I've heard multiple different issues and that, you know, as a GP, I look after patients. I, I have to advocate and, and treat and manage um, conditions. I will bring that sort of, you know, passion and commitment to my electorate as well. All right, okay. And one, one probably important question I would say that going by mm. what our opinion polls they are telling that Labour is polling high, um, courtesy to Prime Minister Arden's po personal popularity. So do you think it's mm. a, quite a nice time, a right time for you to start <laughs> your parliamentary career? <laughs> well, you could say so. I mean, Jacinda and the team have done really well. So I guess uh, this, I guess is a, it is a prime time to come in as a, as a new candidate. Um, but I'm, you know, uh, I've always said, when I stepped away from the selection before selection, that sitting on the other end on the Ministry of Health uh, advisory group of COVID-19, that the government has done well to take our, our recommendations and implement them and therefore protect our community and New Zealand as a whole. So yeah, sure. Jacinda's done a great job. Okay. Well, I do understand. Uh, but again, having said that, uh, probably the job is still not complete. And as I said, mm. this, this electorate is a marginal electorate. We don't mm. know what's going to happen. Uh, mm. But moving forward, probably since uh, you are still an unknown commodity in, in the parliament, if I, if I may mm. say that, uh, we mm. don't know yeah. your views around the two referendums that are going to be uh, also mm. voted for. So if I can quickly touch base, uh, mm. what are your views on... Uh, the cannabis uh, referendum and mm. the end of life choice referendum, both. Yep. So th those are one of the things I guess uh, my community is always asking me about. I think for first of all, with the cannabis, my, as a clinician, I've seen the issues regarding the, the effects of cannabis. So I've seen a lot of patients come through, a lot of psychosis, um, a lot of mental health issues. Um, I don't think the bill itself is able to protect our youth, as other people would say. Um, I would see this as a detriment to our community. So I will be voting no to it um, because of those, those multiple issues that I see with it. With the end of life choice bill, again, number one, as a clinician, um, when, when I signed up to be a doctor, uh, I, I swore the Hippocratic Oath first do no harm. And I think giving a lethal dose to someone to end their life quickly 
um, I think that will be against that uh, oath that I've sworn. But also, you know, I, I believe in the investment into palliative healthcare. They do a, a tremendous job uh, when it's uh, someone ending, uh, nearing the end of their life. So I, I believe investment there. So I'll be voting no to that uh, particular recommendation. All right. Okay. Well, well then I would say, uh, uh, at least in that respect, you have done better than your leader, Prime Minister Arun, are coming out <laughs> clean in which way you want to vote. So uh, now, uh, Dr. Lavasa, I know that um, mm. you are you're going to be on, on the road now. You have given mm. your valuable time today in the middle of campaign. So before mm. I let you go, uh, uh, just one final message if I have to ask that why mm. the Kiwi Indian community living in your area should be voting for mm. you. Mm. So I believe this is a, because this is a new seat, we have to start uh, at, a, at a good position. And I believe I'm the right candidate for this time, for this COVID-19 pandemic time, to actually come and advocate on not only the health issues, but all the issues that we find within our Indian community and across um, the community at large. So I'm the right person at this time. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and one last thing, probably from last time when we covered your campaign launch, we were able to speak mm. to your campaign chair as well. I think Anne Singh, mm. uh, who was yeah. really great in speaking in Punjabi language, and that was a very big yeah. hit within our community. Yeah. So yeah, yeah uh, probably yeah. if she would have been there, I would have asked her <laughs> to deliver a message in Punjabi. But anyways, yeah. uh, thanks for your time, yeah. Dr. Nehru. Uh, <laughs> thanks for sharing your uh, inputs, your your insights, and yeah. your passion about politics for this electorate. We we wish you all the best and we will see you on October 17th on election night uh, with the result uh, and, and all the best for that. Thank you so much, Sandeep. Thank you to all the viewers. Cheers.